Hey everybody, my name is Chris Mayhew, and thanks for joining me on the Lost Art Magic YouTube channel. On this channel, I'm going to be sharing a bunch of different tricks and tips and moves. On this video, I'm going to be sharing a handling of mine for Triumph. Uh, I call it Medium. It's an in-the-hands name-a-card Triumph, which uh, has a lot of really cool elements, but I think you'll like it. It's fun to do, and it's really fun to watch, so let's check out the trick, and then I'll show you how it works. I'm going to show you a couple different ways that magicians like to find cards. Uh, there's three ways, actually. Uh, there's the easy way. This is with the deck face up. Spectre just names any card they see. Let's say the Seven of Clubs. Found it. Found it. Magic. Okay, obviously uh, not the most impressive because deck's face up. Uh, but if we tried to find the Seven of Clubs with the deck face down, a little more difficult, a little more impressive. This would be considered the hard way. And right about there. Eh? Yeah, okay, it's the hard way, all right? It's not the not the best. And then uh, there's a mixture of the two. You got the easy way and the hard way. When you mix those together, face up into face down, you get yourself the medium way, all right? And uh, this is the way that I prefer to find the card because you got cards face up, you got cards going face down. With this condition, much more difficult to, uh, to try to locate that card. So let's see here. Um, to be honest, actually, I, uh, I'm a liar. I prefer the fourth way. Yes, there is a fourth way. Uh, you have the easy way, you have the medium way, you have the hard way, and then you have the extremely medium way. All right, that's actually the way that I like to locate cards. Uh, so for that to work, I just need to give uh, the spectator, um, give them uh, just a packet here. All right. You know what? Actually, we'll give uh, we'll give them we'll give them couple more, all right? A little more there. And I'll take a packet here, all right? If you just watch, all I have to do is just cover the card for just a moment, all right? Just a moment. You'll see, all right? Give it a little longer, okay? Just a little longer. Come on. Did it work? Okay, good, good. You take a look, all right? Something interesting happens. All the cards that you saw were once face up and face down, all mixed together, all go back to being the same way. But that's not the impressive part. The impressive part is that you have been holding on to a packet the entire time, Mr. Spectator. And if they go, they go through their packet, they will also see that all the cards have fixed themselves, except for one, making it extremely medium to find. So there you go. As you can see, there's a bunch of different ideas from a ton of different magicians all coming together to create this routine. Uh, Triumph, the actual idea of Triumph is the idea by Di Vernon. Classic. Classic. Uh, but the actual Triumph handling that I based this off of was J.C. Wagner, who had a In the Hands Triumph, which I just loved. Uh, if, for those of you who aren't familiar with J.C. Wagner, he was a wonderful bar magician, uh, incredible human being. Uh, may he rest in peace. But if you haven't seen any of his material, definitely check it out because he's got some wonderful, wonderful... Uh, ideas and plots and concepts that uh, have changed and molded magic for the better. The name a card portion of this is inspired by Jerry Sadowitz's name a card triumph. Uh, you can find his triumph handling in the book Cards at the Table, which is a wonderful book. Lots of really cool ideas in there. Uh, one of my favorite is this traveling pips concept where it's an ambitious card, but the pips travel up one by one. Uh, so definitely check out that book. But I think the idea that for me sort of takes the cake in this routine is the idea of putting the packet into the spectator's hand and letting them sort of feel the magical moment when all the cards uh, fix themselves. This was a brilliant idea created by a buddy of mine, uh, Eric Who. Eric Who? That's right, Eric Who. You don't know who? You should know who. Who is who? You should definitely seek out Eric Who if you're ever in New York City. He's a really awesome underground magician there. So. Let's get into the actual explanation of how this trick works. Okay, so how is this trick working? Uh, so you do have to do something sneaky at the very beginning before you start the trick. You need to turn half the pack face up. So half of his face up, half his face down. Now there's a couple different ways to accomplish this. Um, easy way is to just go to the bathroom or whatever facility you're in and uh, go to the third stall if there's stalls and lock yourself in there. Make sure nobody else is looking. And then just do this. And of course, wash your hands and make sure they're a little damp so everybody knows that you washed your hands. Another option is you can do a mechanical reversal as you're turning over the pack. All right, that's always a good move. If you don't know the mechanical reversal, 
it's a really good move. I definitely recommend checking it out, but I'm not going to teach it uh, on this on this video right here. Okay, but basically this is your starting position. Half face up, half face down. So you're actually pretty far ahead already. So now you have a spectator as you go through. Uh, I like to talk about, you know, three different ways to find a card. This way being the easy way with the deck face up, and it's really just a dumb throwaway joke. But in this joke, you are actually obtaining a, a card and keeping control of it. So you go through and you say, yeah, just name any card, I'll find it. Or sorry, uh, not any card. You say, name any card you see, that's important, and I'll find it. So let's say they name the Seven of Clubs. All right, from here you go, found it. Pretty amazing, okay, obviously not. Uh, but now what you're gonna do is, it should seem as if you're just kinda going through and then squaring up the pack. But what you're going to do is actually call this card to the bottom of the pack. So as you square up, you're gonna pull this card all the way to this side and then just slide it to the bottom of the pack. And when you turn it over, I guess now it'll be the top, okay? Now you're in this position. You have their selection on the top of the pack, some face-up cards followed by face-down cards, all right? So now you go on to say, uh, yeah, we could find your card the, the hard way. From here, I just kind of cut the pack, and you cut to the natural break, but you're actually going to lift up one more card, okay? Bam. And so now this looks like a normal packet, and you do this casually and say, hey, bam. Okay, it's not your card, but uh, it's the hard way. Give me a break, okay? Um, but now you're in this great position. You're so far ahead, and now you can get into uh, the Goodwin Jenning display, which is a really wonderful display. I recommend trying to add it to uh, any Triumph routine that you're already doing. Uh, it looks like this. So you take the cards, and you just mix them face up into face down, okay? You want to make sure that this is a straddle pharaoh. What I mean by straddle pharaoh is that this packet, uh, the packet that is, I guess, gimmicked in a way, not really gimmicked, but just, uh, you know, there's, you're trying to hide that orientation, uh, that packet should actually be on the top and bottom of the deck, sort of sandwiching or encasing this packet, okay? And uh, before you do this uh, display, you're going to secretly slide this bottom card up to this packet, okay? But now check this out. You've got this really wonderful display where I can do this and show all those cards very cleanly. Now you're gonna do this uh, optical revolve type thing. Uh, and now you can show that this packet is uh, all face down. Of course, this is actually the orientation that you're in, okay? And their selection, seven of clubs, is right at the top. So now from here, you uh, square everything up. <laughs> now from here, you're going to actually cut the cards and place them into the spectator's hand. So if the spectator has their hand out, you kind of cut a small packet and you get this display. All right, and you say, uh, here, we'll uh, give you some cards. I just place those in their hand. Uh, but now you kind of uh, offbeat moment, you're like, uh, maybe we'll give you a little bit more, all right? And what you're actually doing here just gonna put this down for a second, is you're sandwiching the spectator selection in between this pack, all right? Which is really awesome, and you're just so far ahead at this point. And now you can show this packet very, uh, that's all messed up. And you're gonna turn it over so that all the cards are face down, except for this one face up card. Of course, they all think that uh, they're all mixed. Uh, and now you basically do any color change that you want to get this card to turn over or to get the top card to be face down. I actually use a Erdnays change because uh, it's one of those changes that you can do so slowly and I love it. Uh, uh, a lot of people when they do the Erdnays change, they kind of push up and then pull down. Uh, that back and forth action does not look very good. Uh, so what I recommend doing is with the pinky, as your hand goes to cover this card, the pinky is pushing that card upwards, okay? Uh, but it's just a much, uh, much better action than this upward pushing action, all right? So uh, the hand comes over, pushes that card forward. Palm is gonna pull this card uh, back, okay? So now it's here. Uh, and this is done as you're kind of trying to sh show that the card has changed so you're here, and you're like, look, if you just wait, you'll see that the card, okay, not yet, give it a little longer. All right, and I just wait here in this position. Now you get this lovely, lovely visual of the hand coming away, nothing in the hand. Cards are face down, and when you spread, they thought this deck was all face up, mixed face up and face down. But now suddenly, uh, it's all back to normal, which is great. Of course, you're just hiding that card there. But the best part is, of course, when the spectator goes through their pack, and they find that all the cards have also fixed themselves. Well, that's just shocking. And then just to add an extra punch, of course, the one card that they named, that they might even forgot they named, 
is the only card left in their pack. So there you go, that's medium. There you go, a handling for triumph that is done in your hands and in the spectator's hands, so you never need a table for it. And it also has this name a card element to it, uh, which I do want to talk about that for a second because I think it really is a, a really cool disarming element in this effect because normally in a triumph routine you have somebody pick a card and just in that act of the person taking card out of the pack, remembering it and putting it back on the back, that whole entire instance is sort of ingrained in their mind and it becomes part of the routine itself. Where in this version, uh, the beginning where they kind of just name a card and you almost use it as a throwaway joke. You know, like, oh, this is the easy way, I found it. Uh, it kind of just slides by and it's not really a very memorable moment. So as the time misdirection happens and the routine goes on, they sort of forget what happened in the beginning to allow them to select a card in the first place. So you get this really disarming moment of the name card just suddenly appearing at the very end of the trick. So give it a try, and I will see all of you back on the Lost Art Magic YouTube channel soon.